uh, I'm going to work out something for this mechanism as well. Okay, so coming down to something called as product differentiation. Uh, <clears throat> now, product differentiation, we can differentiate in terms of something called as uh, form, features, performance, quality, performance, durability, reliability, repairability, uh, style, and customization. Uh, these exactly are all uh, which exactly has been uh, classified as product uh, differentiation. So effectively, uh, we are trying to be looking at these different aspects. So let us look at something called as the form. The first aspect of differentiation of a product. And now many products can be differentiation in terms of their size or their shape or their physical structure of the product. Now, um, let's say, for example, if I consider the many possible forms of uh, this uh, analgesic aspirin, uh, although essentially a commodity, it can be differentiated in terms of their dosage. Like aspirin, uh, the, the, the analgesic tablet, you can always have the dosage, the size, the shape, the color, costing, or the time it takes to act. Like, for example, you have got the uh, fast uh, acting, uh, fast release, uh, or the delayed response, so uh, or sustained release. Uh, like, like uh, the dissolvability factor is incorporated into the uh, product in terms of the form that it that it dissolves over a period, a slow period of time. It has a sustained release or it's a fast acting. That is, it, it dissolves real fast and uh, uh, assimilates into your bloodstream and uh, reacts uh, very quickly. So effectively, uh, there are certain drugs which require to be having a quick response and that uh, certain aspects of drugs which exactly need a delayed response. So effectively, form plays a very important aspect in this context. Then comes the next important aspect is features. Now, there are certain type of products with varying features. Uh, these features, they supplement their basic function. Like, for example, uh, we are having certain type of um, cars which exactly have a different type of uh, trim levels or, for that matter, a different type of customization at a higher cost or low standard packages for lower cost. The different variants which exactly are there in the car like for example you have the vxi you have the lxi and so luxury variant or the uh, the the vxi variant or the uh, exclusive variant we've got different type of uh, variants which exactly define the different set of features which are packed into the different type of models so uh, we have the basic form and the form is supplemented by certain other features which exactly have been there then comes something which exactly is uh, called as customization. Now, you can actually have something called as mass customization, which exactly uh, prepare a ma basic mass and then individual products, uh, designs, services and communications can be added to that component. Like, for example, you exactly have, you can have a product which is customized according to your benefits or according to your needs. You can have certain type of uh, features which can be added in type, inside the product which can be customized. So this is also on the basis. So is there a product which can be customized or is there a product which cannot be customized? So this exactly can be one more aspect of product differentiation. Coming back to the performance quality. Uh, this, again, uh, is also a designing of a performance quality level for the appropriate target market and competition. However, uh, not necessarily the high pos highest possible level, but they must manage it and continuously improving the product can produce high returns and market share. Like, for example, we exactly are going to be looking into something called as uh, a small caselet of Mercedes-Benz. Uh, from 2003 to 2006, Mercedes-Benz endured is uh, endured to be one of the most uh, painful stretches. They endured the painful stretches in its 127-year history. Uh, its stellar quality reputation took a beating in the J.D. Power 
and other surveys and bmw surpassed it in the global sales to recoup a new management team reorganized the company around the functional elements that is uh, things around motor chassis electronic systems instead of by the model lines now engineers began testing electronic systems a year earlier and put each new model through 10000 tests that ran 24 hours a day for 3 weeks that was the exis exhaust active testing that they uh, put through to each new model of mercedes benz and these models went through something like around 10000 tests and these tests ran 24 hours a day and for 3 weeks in continuation that was the amount of rigorous testing different components and uh, in 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 every model of mercedes was put through the mercedes tripled its number of prototypes for new designs allowing engineers to drive them 3 million miles before production with these and other changes the number of the flaws in the car they dropped from 72% from the, that was there in 2002 peak and the warranty cost because you know when 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 the flaws decrease the warranty cost also decrease the warranty cost decreased by 25% as a side effect the mercedes benz dealers have had to contend with a sizable drop in the repair and services business so effectively what really happened was that this ex, uh, this um, uh, rigorous testing resulted in uh, faulty uh, products and parts dropping and uh, this resulted in cutting the warranty and the repair and the service cost now these warranty repair and service cost was actually a cost which was borne by the dealers of the uh, brand that is mercedes benz brand and uh, definitely of course it created a bad name for the product as well because uh, it meant that the product had a lot of uh, defective components and parts and was not performing as per the brand name that it actually represented so effectively it so happened that all these things dropped and this resulted in a, a very high value for this uh, product so this is exactly what it means by the performance quality now coming back to the conformance quality now buyers they expect a high conformance quality that is the degree in which all products are produced are identical and meet the promise specifications suppose you are buying a product like for example you have the Porsche 90 911 this is designed to accelerate to 60 miles per hour within 10 seconds so uh, the Porsche 911 uh, basically in the moment in 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 10 seconds it goes from 0 to 60 miles per hour so uh, now every Porsche which is coming out of the assembly line actually does this the model is said to have a very high conformance quality a product with low conformance quality will disappoint some buyer because probably it will so happen that one product may do that but the other product may not so effectively that exactly is the aspect of a conformance quality so every product actually demonstrates the same level of conformance which it guarantees uh, so effectively that is what is the difference between uh conformance and performance performance is the general uh quality um the four performance level that is a uh, performance level can be low average high or superior okay that is the primary characteristics in which the uh, product operates but when it comes to conformance it means that every two products which are there are identical in every respect that is there is no change in terms of the uh, uh, replaceability of that item for one for the other that is they would conform to the same level of uh, quality output that they are supposed to. then comes something which is called as durability now durability is a measure of how the product is expected to operate uh, during their entire operating life under the natural and stressful conditions so uh if it is a valued attribute for vehicles or for kitchen appliances or other durable goods so that's exactly how the word durable goods have actually come into play 
the extra price for durability must not be excessive therefore the product must not be subject to rapid technological obsolescence so uh, the product life cycle also has to be a pretty uh, decent it, it must not be very small that is it becomes obsolete in a very short period of time like for example when you buying a mobile phone we exactly look at the durability for a phone to be at least 2 years or 3 years now they have uh, come up with a new context that is called as upgrades minimum 4 upgrades or minimum 5 upgrades this is basically how much amount of upgrade the phone can actually take and that would define how long the phone would be durable now also things like television personal computer cell phones they all exactly have been uh, categorized in terms of durability perspective coming down to reliability uh, normally buyers will pay a premium for very reliable products so reliability happens to be the measure of the probability that the product will not malfunction or fall within a specified time period so effectively you can say that there are certain products which exactly are reliable and there are certain products which may not be reliable like for example when we look at certain products like chinese uh, products when we say uh, country of origin we look at a product which is from a country of origin beyond we we, we have a perception that chinese products are not reliable products because they may fail to perform uh, and and that is why they exactly are sub priced or they are cheap products or they are not quality uh, products so that is why we say that we we are not very careful about the reliability quotient of a product which exactly is there uh, specifically coming from the chinese stable and uh, when when we are looking at something called as repairability now repairability would mean that you are able to maintain and repair the product maintenance and repair uh, the product can be repaired uh, that is purchased product is in a good working order uh, but let's say for example you are going to get any sort of a repair that is required in the product because of the utility or any sort of a malfunction you exactly have a service support or a electronic support for customers who can actually look and fix the problem sometimes uh, online and sometimes they need to be having a technicians coming out and addressing your product now there are two aspects when it comes to uh, style and design now here this is a very important aspect when it comes to uh, things like uh, style and design when when we talking about a uh, style and design so what 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 is basically design design is actually the totality of features that affect how a product looks feels functions to a customer so how the product actually looks how the product feels and how does it uh, uh, function to a customer consumer this is called as the design so design offers functional as well as aesthetic benefits and appeal to both our uh, rational and emotional sides so we exactly are very very uh, um, uh, very 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 connected to the design component of a product now i'm going to be talking about um, certain aspects like there are certain uh, uh, rationale when it comes to design of a product um, or or the styling per se um, this is very important in the context that um, many products actually uh, fall into this aspect of design so uh, effectively the totality of features that affect the way a product looks feels and functions to the consumers i'm going to be talking about a very interesting product per se out here uh, which exactly has uh, really uh, impacted uh, the designing of this product uh, i'm talking about a brand uh, which uh, which which we all have it at our kitchen but we really don't know about the design quotient of this product how international the design is i'm going to uh, be reading out the small caselet which will explain about this impact so this is called hawkins uh, the brand hawkins this was established in india in 1959 
So Hawkins is known for innovative products, designed and its innovative designs. So specifically in the area of pressure cookers and cookware. Uh, so you see the lid that fits inside the cooking vessel is a distinguishing feature of the Hawkins pressure cooker. Due to this feature, the lid is pressure locked for safety and it is not possible to open the cooker until the pressure inside is reduced. The company makes different types and models of pressure cookers with different features and benefits. The Futura brand, for example, has obtained the patents and design registration in different countries and is the only pressure cooker to be displayed in the Museum of Modern Arts in New York. So effectively, this is the brand which exactly is displayed in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. The very pressure cooker that sits exactly in your home. So the Conchura is another model that has a body all rounded side for easier stirring, uh, better food visibility and yet convenience is taking uh, convenient in uh, taking out the cooked food. Uh, in addition to the pressure cookers, the company has a range of products by different cooking purposes. Like, for example, you have the brand Futura Cookware. These include tawa, which is girdles, uh, griddles, uh, frying pans, saucepans, salt pans, cook and serve bowls, handies, and stew pots. Uh, these products are actually made in heavy gauge, commercially pure aluminium up to 6.35 mm thick for even heat dissipation and steady heat retention. The Futura range is available in hard anodized or non-stick coating, thus providing a superior cooking surface. And the product strategy of the company is to span a wide range of household cooking products through this innovative product design. A strong focus on distribution and high service standards. So this exactly is what ex uh, is all about this product called as uh, Hawkins, which is a, a benchmark, which has established a benchmark in uh, terms of design components. You know, because if you're looking at the type of product which exactly is there in the Indian context, uh, specifically, you have to look into the psyche of the uh, people or or the or the culture of the people or the gastronomic habits of the people when, when they get into interacting with food. Food is something very personal uh, and, and it's, it's an important identity differentiator in terms of any sort of a culture. And how people actually prepare food is also very vital. So you've got to understand that uh, Indians, they actually require a specific type of uh, orientation when it comes to connect with the food during the cooking stages. So uh, you, you would not be steaming or baking foods in India, but rather you would be stirring the food. You need to be constantly uh, in, in touch with the type of the food that you are actually cooking. So you need to stir constantly. And that exactly is where the Hawkins uh, design that, that, that the food must be visible. Uh, it must uh, not stick and it, it must be easy to uh, extract it after cooking and so on and so forth. Now, I'll, I'll give you a very interesting uh, example take on this. Another product that uh, uh, came to my attention was that which never was a successful in India. It, it's, it's successful across the globe, but I don't think it has been successful. Maybe, yes, it sells in India, but it never was a big success. You'll not find it in every household. And uh, that product is called as the dishwasher. In Indian households, you'll rarely find, I mean, of course, there would be in certain households, but uh, you would not find the dishwashers in uh, generally in Indian households, simply because uh, many a times the size of, uh, probably they have integrated these uh, dimensions in terms of designing the product now, but off late, it never was incorporated that uh, dishwashers were designed for uh, Indian uh, products because Indian cooking uh, ware are basically uh, big uh, 
uh, handis and big kadhais and these are a certain type of uh, the the walks which exactly are pretty large so um, they do not actually uh, fit in the dishwashers or probably earlier times there were was i don't know if they have made certain amount of changes in uh, dishwasher uh, capacity because they did they basically for cutlery and uh, glassware or um, the tableware uh, or spoons basically these are so having some different type of components in uh, uh, the, the the meshes are there or the, the trays are there for these type of uh, uh, devices which exactly need to be washed uh, uh, utensils which need to be washed but not for these uh, huge uh, big uh, which exactly is very much significant or connected with the indian style of cooking so we needed to have a different type of an orientation when it comes to washing or cleaning these different type then then the type of uh, cooking uh, 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 that that we actually do defines the type of products that's why you will not find many households with uh, dishwashers so as is there with washing machines you'll find nearly in every household but not uh, dishwashers so so what i'm trying to say is that uh, design plays a very important aspect into the integration of a product within a consumer's uh, lifestyle so that's the basic uh, purpose of looking at this aspect in terms of design uh, the quotient now coming down to another important aspect that is called as service uh, differentiation that is uh, we we talked about product differentiation but there are certain type of service differentiation which also needs to be looked into the first is ordering ease how easily you are able to order the product um, can you order it at uh, with with the ease so when when we are designing a sort of a service um, uh, offer we want to see that the ordering uh, ease is there in terms of the services then delivery how quickly it is delivered like for example you said like uh, uh, 30 minutes pizza delivery so that's again uh, a important component into the service differentiation that is how quickly the services actually delivered so we exactly have new technology which comes in uh, recently uh, we had something like uh, Uh, drones being uh, designed for delivery of certain type of packages or uh, incorporating the gps uh, global positioning system is incorporated into the uh, designing of the uh, uh, service design where basically they can pick up the location of the customer to tell him what is the lead time minimum time in which the product can be delivered to you and you, before you complete the order like uh, the delivery is also like if you're looking at a, a component where basically a service differentiation in terms of amazon coming up with amazon prime a one day delivery or a 24 hour delivery or next day delivery so effectively delivery is also an important aspect of a service differentiation then comes installation installation is required to make the product operational at its planned location now installation can sometimes be a true selling point for buyer of complex products like for example uh, you can also like for example if you're looking at a ikea showroom which says that diy furniture that is you can install the furniture by yourself or does it require a specialist in order to install the the, the product or and you need to actually be waived off this uh, installation cost because the product let's say for example you are ordering an air conditioner online you cannot install an air conditioner uh, at your home all by yourself uh, you need to have different uh, people the team of people who exactly are going to be there for doing this level of installation work or you buying a water geyser you need to have a plumber and an electrician in order to assist you for uh, for for putting it and making it operable isn't it so effectively installation happens to be the second level of uh, service differentiation then customer training how exactly a customer is trained because unless a customer is properly trained he cannot make the best use or the optimum use of the product which exactly is uh, offered to him then customer consulting uh, that is uh, consulting includes a data information system advices that the seller has to offer 
to the buyer. Like for example, you need to have an upgrade or you need to have a patch to correct your problem or you need to have a remote location taking in charge of your uh, laptop in order to uh, address a problem that you have encountered in a software or any sort of a hardware. Now this all requires customer consulting. Then maintenance and repair, uh, this is a very important, like for example, Hewlett Packard offers online technical support or e-support for customers who search for an online database for fixes and seek uh, online uh, aspects. Uh, then we have got something called exactly uh, on his returns. That is, you want to have controllable returns or uncontrollable returns. That is, uh, if, if you're not using a product and you would like to have it changed, uh, what exactly is the facility which is there? Yes, Yasser. Any, any query coming up? You raised your hand. So, so sorry to interrupt. Actually, we have another class. Okay, okay, okay. Perfectly fine. Actually, I got a bit uh, delayed by the small uh, glitch that we have. Uh, please, uh, we can we can uh, uh, switch off at this point. You can leave. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.